Disclaimer, please buckle up and keep your arms and legs in the cart at all times. This is a rant based in personal observation and opinion. No facts were harmed in the making of this content. If your butthole is already sore, you might redirect your browser to an episode of the Facts of Life and enjoy with some soothing chamomile tea. Randy has his opinions, and I've got mine. So before every local extra used in the filming of Deliverance comes from me for using technology, remember, this is all in good fun. Take a deep breath, grab a snack, and enjoy the show. We're here to roast beef, not roast marshmallows. Unless you're into that kind of thing, we don't kink shame around here. Hey everyone, this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm starting to grow a little bit concerned about a fellow member of our community. So let's all band together and see if we can help good old Uncle Randy find his self-awareness again. At first, I was like most of you guys. I thought Randy said a lot of the stuff that he did just for clicks and views, but now I'm starting to worry he's actually believing what's coming out of his mouth. With the notable exception of his delusional hate for forward-facing sonar, I try to ignore most of what Randy says. Well, there was at one time that Randy kind of alluded that there should be no co-angling at any level of competitive fishing. Well, I took him behind the woodshed and whooped his ass like his father should have. Here's a snippet of what that looked like. So, do I believe at the ultimate level there should be co-anglers? No. That's where you need marshals. That's where you need folks there to keep an eye on the rules. BFLs and a lot of the other organizations that think that they're pros, that call themselves pros because they can buy a jersey and stamp anybody's logo or catchphrase on them, uh, not necessarily pros. The co-anglers, that's where the future of the sport is. So I don't really go for the notion that that's the future of the sport because... The problem is now, as I see it, is he started taking passive-aggressive shots at other channels, smaller channels. Why? Because they dare exist? See, he's no longer just Randy Jun Un, the supreme leader of the People's Republic against forward-facing sonar. He's now trying to appoint himself the Fuhrer of YouTube fishing. And before any of you ask, yes, I did try to reach out to him personally to have this conversation. I tried reaching out to him by phone and via Instagram, and he wanted nothing to do with me. Why? Well, because he's a pussy. <laughs> and Randy thinks you shouldn't have a YouTube fishing channel unless you have a tournament background. Here, I'll let him explain it. The rise of new bass fishing YouTube channels that are not what they seem. Now, to the untrained eye, it seemed like, well, that guy knows what he's talking about. He's giving up some good information. Because the best bass fishing YouTubers have a tournament background. I really think that there's gotta be some credentials behind those particular people in order to legitimize that particular YouTube channel. That's oh, and not just any tournament background either. And I don't mean the tournament background in spotlighting for bass. because I Now, I spent 18 years tournament fishing before my disability and my health took me out of the game. And I completely disagree with Randy on this. Why? If the 45 years I've spent fishing on this planet has taught me anything, it's that you can learn something from every single person you fish with. Sometimes, even if it's what not to do. Now, Randy's got kind of a name for making baseless accusations against some of the younger anglers saying people were snagging fish using forward-facing sonar, and even cheating for using tournament legal technology. In one of his more recent tirades, he actually accused other channels of stealing content ideas from bigger channels and rebranding it as their own. But what proof did he offer? None. As the segment of the bass fishing YouTube channels out there that are basically um, riding off the backs of other YouTubers. So they will go to some legitimate bass fishing YouTube channels, guys that have really solid information, and they watch those videos and they absorb those videos and then they regurgitate it. They, but it's basically um, copycatted information from other legitimate channels. Whoa, Nelly, that's a lot to unpack here, starting with narcissism and projection. See, there may be a thousand videos on YouTube about how to rig a drop shot rig. Does that make any of them invalid? No. Why? Because just like in school, a teacher may teach you one subject and it doesn't click with you, then you get a different teacher and she hits a nail on the head. Man, it's YouTube being YouTube. Recently, I had a conversation with another content creator. He told me that there was a huge channel out there who wasn't just a subscriber to his channel, but a member 
of his channel, which then gets him early access to all of his videos before they're made public, and he was running a couple of weeks out. Well, then suddenly, the bigger channel come out with a topic that was exactly one of his videos was before he even got the chance to publish it. Coincidence? Yeah. yeah I absorb and I consume a lot of bass fishing YouTube content because there's some very subtle plagiarism there that's going on. And if we weren't already worried about projection and self-awareness, this takes the cake. And another genre of YouTubers that are starting to pop up there are what I call the ambulance chasers. There are an emerging number of YouTubers out there that don't give fishing tips. They, all they do is they, 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 they scour the internet looking for any type of thing that they can put breaking news on or some, some type of controversial issue or some type of, some type of thing that's gonna get a rise out of people. And I'm not talking about like stuff what I do with live scope and, and they come across as these ambulance chasers that are trying to just put these sensational stories out there, you know, simply to get clicks and views. Did you really just reference channels that use the term breaking news? Got some breaking news. That One more time, I couldn't have heard you right. Got some breaking news. That Randy also says he doesn't do sensationalism, so I guess we're just supposed to ignore this. Even though sometimes it may seem I'm just doing videos out there for clicks. Now, isn't this the same guy who posed naked on the front deck of his boat a few decades ago? And no, there was no shadow dangling. Now, I'm not completely sure here, but is he calling his viewers stupid? You guys may have some YouTubers you really like to watch and that you really think know what's going on, but to the trained eye, it's not so much because... And when he talks about channels who don't fish or offer tips, well, every channel's contribution's a little bit different. I, for one, I fish every chance my body lets me. And for those of you who don't know, my wife has multiple sclerosis, so we don't get out as much as we used to. And she loves to fish. In fact, she's fished several tournaments with me. As far as offering tips is concerned, I do what I can from here. On the other hand, Randy, he'll offer some tips. Usually you can buy them at Tackle Warehouse. As far as fall fishing coming up, one is this Mega Bass Sleeper Craw Guy. And also please check out some of my Block It Throwback Jigs from Cumberland Pro Lure. As you probably already know, on this channel, I deal with primarily news topics. I do my research, I actually interview people, and I bring my receipts. The problem I think he has with channels that actually report the news is the fact that they do their research. Most people know the truth when they hear it. That threatens his shtick, his form of content. And while I absolutely love bringing you guys the news, once in a while I like to spread my wings and get in touch with my editorial side, like this video. As a matter of fact, I was going to do a parody video where Randy backs up all of his anti-forward-facing sonar rhetoric and joins the newly formed Traditional Angling Alliance. It's a new tournament organization. They only allow three rods per boat, no electronics, and you have to wear a loincloth. So then Randy decided to crap on the heads of all of his fans by refusing to go to the only tournament organization who has fully banned the use of forward-facing sonar and instead has opted to stay with the only division out of the big three who has no restrictions on it whatsoever. NPFL, I had Brad Fuller on. He's, Any interest in fishing that? Have you? Has that thought crossed your mind? Is that a possibility of even exploring that option in 25? Well, five years ago, I definitely would have done that. But now, you know, I've got, I'm so busy. You know, I've got four kids to take care of. I, I've got, you know, three YouTube channels that I run. So the way I see it is Randy thinks he knows what's best for everybody from what to throw and how to fish and what electronics to use to even what to watch on YouTube. You know what? I have viewers from every walk of life and every level of fishing. And while I might not care for some of the things other channels do and say, I'm not about to tell you guys what to watch. I'm just happy that you're spending a little bit of your time with me. On that note, I want to thank each and every single one of you for being here. Please do me a favor. Like, comment, share, subscribe, even think about becoming a member. And until next time we meet, enjoy this beautiful weather. Get out there on the water and keep it wet. Yo, it's a real tackle. Let's get to the facts. I don't sugarcoat nothing. I'll stick in the max. You think I'm holding back? Now nah, I better step back. I'm dropping lines.